Now, this is uh, Alec Pierce Scuba, Vinti Scuba. Sorry, I'm anxious to get started here. This is what uh, what I'm all about, 50s and 60s. I was a, I was a, I don't know what I was when I was a kid, but I was hyperactive. Uh, I wanted to do everything. When I was, by the time I was 10 years old, I was, I was welding. I, I could form metal. I could build a house, not a whole house, but with help, I could build a house, rafters. And, and then I started high school, and I learned milling machines and, and heat treatment and lathes and all, all kinds of machinery. I just loved that kind of stuff. I love building things. I still do. If you've been to my channel, Alec Pierce at the Ranch, you'll see some of the things that I built. But in the 50s and 60s, building your own stuff was tremendous. It was a big, big thing. Do it yourself, DIY. When I say DIY now to somebody under 40 years of age, DIY, what's that? Well, DIY means do it yourself. And it was a big, big thing. There were magazines and articles came out for DIY uh, uh, people all the time. You could build anything. Boats, very, very common. Sea fleas, right up to cruisers. D living room tables, dining room tables, kitchen cabinets, televisions. Yes, there were plans to build your own television. Think about it for a minute. And of course, there were lots and lots of plans for sports people, okay, including scuba diving. Scuba diving was very young in the 50s and 60s, and so it was very exciting. So magazines went out of their way to get people to write articles about DIY, do it yourself, making your own stuff. Here's a couple of examples. You've seen some of these. I've shown you some of these already in my prior issues, but I have a special little thing to share with you today. Here is a magazine. This particular magazine is uh, July 1953. For those that, that want to know which magazine this is, go looking for it, go and find it. You won't find one like this, this is virtually new. July 1953, Popular Science. This magazine is still made today. A little different format, a little bigger, a little thinner, and so on, but same magazine, still pub published today. But not with these articles. You pick up a current Popular Science, there's nothing in there but do it yourself. Too much liability. And too little skill. <laughs> anyway, here's a great magazine for scuba divers. Build your own scuba lung. There it is right there. Build your own diving lung. They didn't use the word scuba because scuba diving, uh, the word scuba had not even really been invented. And so if it had been invented, it wasn't used. But build your own diving lung. Yeah, you go to your local war surplus store, problem. No more war surplus stores. And you pick up an oxygen diluter valve from the um, RCAF uh, or the, or, or the um, USAF, Air Force, oxygen diluter valve. Can't do that anymore. Pick up some gas mass hoses. Can't do that anymore. Anyway, you buy all those, get all and you still get that stuff in various places. Get all that stuff, get a whole set of tanks, and get the tanks uh, uh, ready to be filled with air, another problem, and on and on it goes. But if you're able to get all those bits and pieces together, for less than 50, 60 bucks, you could build your own scuba diving set. Tanks and regulators. Twin tanks and regulators. Yeah, there it is right there, July 1953. Now here's another one. This is from June 54, June 1954. Same, uh, same magazine, Popular Science. This one's even neater. I love this one. I never did one of these one of these hand-powered ones. I did have a, have a surface supply that was, the air was supplied by a refrigerator, an old refrigerator compressor. Refrigerators back in those days were little piston pumps into the refrigerator. And I found what the dump, hooked it up to an old iron horse gasoline motor and ran a garden hose down to myself in the Scugog River up in Ontario. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, it didn't work, so I didn't kill myself. But anyway, there's a whole story about that if you read my story sometimes. Uh, but here you go, this is one here, and it's called How to Build a Beginner's Diving Outfit. A Beginner's Diving Outfit, and if you look closely, can you get in closely there, Kevin? You can see that what this is, is the scuba divers on the bra bottom bringing up treasure. Yeah, and he has a mask on, and that mask is connected by a hose, probably a garden hose, to the boat on the surface, and his buddy is up there with the pump. Yeah, it's an air pump, and he literally pumps back and forth. It's a double-acting piston. Pumps back and pumps air down to his friend. Let's hope he's a good friend, huh? Doesn't stop. Doesn't go for lunch. <laughs> well, it wasn't unionized. Anyway, there you go. Build your own beginner's diving outfit. Yeah, these, these, these magazines and these articles were very, very common. Now, it wasn't just those magazines. There's one from Popular Mechanics. That magazine is still around. So Popular Science and Popular Mechanics are still around. But do-it-yourself... 
build it yourself, unless it's something simple, you know, like a bowl for your mom's birthday, you don't find these anymore. But the driver magazines as well. This is one of the very best. Science and Mechanics was one of my favorites. Science and Mechanics is not around anymore. But this was a great magazine, and, and it, dealt, it had a lot of do-it-yourself, build-it-yourself, sea fleas, and fishing boats, fishing rods and reels, guns, how to build hunting guns. All kind, oh, it was just crazy, and a lot of scuba stuff. And in this particular one, you can see that there is a diver down there, and is building a scuba tow, and he has a scuba tow. That's made out of, are you ready for this? That's made out of a, an old, uh, small size water tank, hot water tank, which you can still get and it has a car battery inside and an electric motor. You could still build this with stuff today. It wasn't so much war surplus. Anyway, there's, there's one of those. I built one of these, just like this, from that magazine. So there's one, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, there also, this was quite common. Very commonly, there'd be a magazine that would come out and it specialized in, this was so popular. Do it yourself and building stuff out of surplus and leftover wood and so on, very popular. This one is called, in fact, Surplus Projects. You got some junk laying around, or you got a nice Army Navy store, or I don't mean Navy, meaning what's it called now? Old Navy. I mean Army Navy surplus store around. Then you get this magazine, you can go crazy. All kinds of things. Did you? What else is on there? 30, 35 millimeter projector. You got to, you got some slides. Who has slides anymore? You can build it. What's this over here? And a, 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 a satellite scope. All kinds of stuff. But in this particular issue, it shows that same. Scuba toe. So there's a different surplus projects, okay? Here's another one. Water Sports Handbook. Again, you don't see these. This was a special publication. Now, these were usually put out by the larger magazine companies. So this could have been a popular science special publication. You know how National Geographic puts out a special publication called History or something? Well, popular science would put out a special po uh, publication called Water Sports. And in this magazine, it was filled with all kinds of, build your own skis, your own ski boat, all kinds of stuff. Docks, mundane stuff as well, which I wasn't interested in. I was interested in underwater. And there it is, build your own scuba lung, underwater camera cases, uh, communication devices so you can talk to your buddy on the surface, underwater lights, canister lights, really, really good lights, uh, all kinds of stuff. It was just fantastic. All right. Now, this particular subject we call build your own submarine. Yes, yes. And I put that in there. It's a little, a little bit misleading. You'll forgive me, okay? A little misleading because I never, ever built a submarine. I'm going to show you something I did build. But just as a demonstration of what you could build, there's a submarine. Now, this particular one is neat because this particular one is a dry submarine. You understand the difference there, Kevin? This is a dry submarine, which means that you get in there in your street clothes just like this. You get inside. You close the lid, right? Lock it shut and you're in a submarine. The difference between this submarine and a submarine as is used by the Navy, for instance, is that this one, you can see, it's got a plexiglass dome over it so you can actually see. And you turn on the electric motor and zip around the lakes looking for neat stuff. So that was a dry submarine, okay? That was popular mechanics. Here's another one from popular mechanics. This is a little bit different. This is a wet sub, a wet sub. So it's the same basic principle, a body with a battery and a motor but it did not have a, plax, a plexiglass dome that closed and sealed. It had a windshield, and you put on scuba tanks. Yeah, and you got in on a seat behind the windshield. You were wet, breathing from scuba, and off you went. The scuba, the scuba would tow you around. I think this particular one carries two divers. Can you see that, Kev? I can't see it. Two divers. So here's a submarine that you could build. And now here's another one. This is a dry sub as well. This is Mechanics Illustrated. It's not around anymore. This is from 1940. 1940, 1962, September of 1962, and this is a dry submarine, a dry submarine. This is made of metal. It did have a plexiglass, you can see it, but there's another one, and there's one more that I have here. I'm building a submarine. This is another one. Build this electric-powered sports sub for under $150. Now, $150, that was in 1966, so that would be like $175 today. No, it'd be more like about... 2000, but academic at that particular time. And this ma magazine, if you had the plans and you had a little bit of skill, a little bit of incentive, and you scrounged around and got the bits and pieces and parts, you could build this wet sub. That's right. Jump on the water in your scuba unit, jump into the sub, and zoom around looking at shipwrecks and all that neat stuff. 
Okay, so what's the tie-in for this episode? Well, the tie-in is here. Popper and Mechanics, this is a little later. This is uh, 1974. 1974. 1974, I was working for a dive store in Scarborough in Toronto called Underwater World. It was a big dive store. I eventually became part owner of that store. Uh, the store actually closed, and we opened another store. It's a long story. But I was working there, and we had a fairly active, fairly large club, scuba diving club. Clubs were big in those days. Not so much now, but they were in those days. And a uh, bunch of young guys like me, and uh, all handy. Some guys were plumbers and electricians, and I was a school teacher at the time, but a mechanic as well, an auto mechanic. And this, this came out. This magazine came out. Yes. And look at that. Uh, motorized scooter tows you on or under the water. Build it from inexpensive PM, Popper and Mechanics plants. And there's these two guys, two, two people here, a guy and a girl, with these two scuba toes. That's what they're, it's a scuba toe. It's just like a, a Farallon or a um, Oceanic makes one, Techna made one. Uh, there's a lot of them around. A lot of cave divers use these to help them traverse. So basically it's, a, it's, it's like, a, like I compare it to a motorcycle for underwater. You grab a hold of it, you squeeze the trigger, and it pulls you through the water. It uses a battery and electric motors and so on. But this particular, and they're expensive. Any decent one today is, is in the area of two or $3,000. But this particular one you could build for uh, if, uh, very little. If you were handy and had wood and bits and pieces laying around, you could build this for a couple of hundred bucks. We built four of them. It was, it was a club project. So we met once a month, but then the group decided we would do this, and the club partially financed it, and we got together, the group of us, every week at one of our members' uh, uh, graduates there in Scarborough, and uh, we, we ended up with four of these. These were made of wood, plywood. They were covered with fiberglass and sealed tightly. They had a car battery in them, and it used, are you ready for this? It used two Minn Kota motors. I'm using Minn Kota as a brand name. It's the motors on a, on a, a, a fishing Motor, you know the fishing motors. You drop off the back of your little canoe or fishing motor, car battery, and spins. And you use two of them. Simple. Took the shaft off and mounted the property according to the plans. And away we went. We had great fun. We had four of them. One of the fellows even built one, and he used a sump pump motor. Yeah, which is a pump and produces water and shoots two jets out the back to push you forward. But we had built four of these. Never ever did build a submarine. Oh, we thought about it, but we built four of them. So how did you do this? Well, it was very simple. Kent Markham was a very, very well-known fellow at that time, and he made, he made up several of these, not all of them. Don, uh, Ron Domkowski, a good friend of mine, uh, did some of them too. But Kent Markham, based in Florida, was a very, very common. And you could write to Kent Markham. This is his plan. You could write to Kent Markham, and, and for very, very little, I think 20 bucks or thereabouts, he would actually send you a full scale plans for the scooter. There's a picture of a diver with a scooter like the ones we built. I'm going to go inside here, Kevin. And here is the internal. You see there, you see this picture here, Kevin. It shows how it's built on the inside. So you get some idea how it was built. But if you really wanted to build one of these, it was very simple. You went to the last page. On the last page, <clears throat> it says, for full-scale plans of this underwater tow, send $12 to Kent Markham. And it has the ad when you send them off, and you come back with the plans. They look like this. These are the plans. Now, this is one sheet. There's actually three sheets to this. But you can see here that it's made of plywood. These are plywood screwed together, sealed with fiberglass. All the plans detail all of that. This is the top shooting down at it. There's an open area, a lid that goes in here that screws down with a rubber seal where the car battery sits. The two Minn Kota motors, you see there's one on each side, one on each wing. Here they are from the top. This shows you how to make the special kill switch. Let me go over here, Kevin, sorry about that. This is what it looks like from the top, you see there? Here's the tow, two motors, two wings, and a car battery in the middle. There's your full scale plans, one sheet, just three sheets like this. And you can actually take this, cut the plywood to match, Pick up two, hopefully used, so they weren't too expensive, fishing, electric fishing motors. A little bit of work with fiberglass, a little bit of paint, car battery, ba 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 There you go. That was great fun. Oh, yeah. We wanted to build a submarine. It would have been a fantastic project, but never did. But we did, but we built four of these. So the submarine was certainly not out, out of mind. There you go. So a little bit of game from the 50s and 60s, guys. A do-it-yourself era, where we did everything ourselves. You couldn't buy them. 
if you could buy them, they're just way too expensive. You know, some of those things cost like two or three or four hundred dollars. Nobody had that kind of money, not in those days anyway. But it was great fun, a lot of fun. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. A little bit from the past, and a picture of the full-scale plans that we had, and a little bit of our stories as well. Alec Pierce, scuba, vintage scuba. What it was like. Build your own scuba equipment from the 50s and 60s. Talk to you again soon. Thank <laughs> you.